Hi students, uh, today we're going to start this book, okay? This is called WordyWise 3000, and I have the, the third edition here, okay? So uh, if you have this book, you can look at it right now, okay? Um, this is book eight, and the vocabulary gets to be a little bit difficult in this one, okay? So this video is going to have two parts. I'm going to try to help you, number one, with pronunciation, and then two, with understanding these words, okay? So to help that, down in the comment box, I'm going to put my list of my own sentences, okay? So I've taken apart these words, uh, taken the words out of the book, and hopefully we can learn together, okay? So turn to chapter one, please, right now. Here we go. So let's read these words, okay? I'll give you enough time so that you can say it. Avid, avid, okay? Brusque, brusque, concise, concise. Demean, demean, despicable, despicable. Yes, there's a movie with this. Emulate, emulate, evoke, evoke, and excruciating, okay, excruciating. Good, make sure you can say all these, okay, especially if your language is, your first language is not English, okay. Be careful with the V sound and all that. Inaugurate. Pervade, another V sound. Pervade, proprietor, pseudonym. Okay, obviously the P has to be quiet here. Pseudonym, rebuff, resilient. Okay, rebuff, resilient. And on the last page here, there's where am I? Okay, there I go. Turbulent, turbulent, way there. Okay, turbulent. Good. So, um, you need to know all these words uh, before you start doing the work, and definitely before you do the reading, okay? So, let's go through these in order. Word number one is avid. Avid, okay? So, avid mostly means that you um, uh, are very enthusiastic about something, okay? So, maybe you are an avid tennis player, okay? I'm an avid watcher of the news. It works like an adjective. So, you know, she is an avid something, an avid tennis watcher, golfer, swimmer, like this, okay? Avid comic book reader, avid video game player. Some of you, my students, okay? So avid. Um, avid does have a second meaning. Avid has a meaning that you really, really want something, okay? So we usually say something like avid for attention, avid for knowledge, avid for knowledge, okay? It means that you really, really want something. OK, um, is even though it does seem like a little a bit of a greedy thing, um, lots of times this is this is a positive word. OK, so, he, you know, um, if you say someone's avid for knowledge, then they really, really want to learn, which is a good thing. OK, so avid, avid, brusque, brusque. OK, brusque means that something has been done uh, quickly and usually not in a very polite way. OK, so if someone is very brusque, if I meet you in the shopping mall, I'm like, oh, hi, student. Oh, thank you. Hi, uh, goodbye. And then you, you will think to yourself, you'll think to yourself, Daryl was very brusque. Okay. I brusquely um, said hello and goodbye. Okay. Maybe I was in a hurry. Maybe I had to pick my children up from school. Usually I'm polite. But today I was like, hello, goodbye, and I'm gone. So you see, he was very brusque. Maybe the teacher in your, in your um, school will say, you know, student, come here. This is being very brusque. There's no please, nothing, nothing, nothing polite about it. Okay. Um, so we say brusque. Uh, the noun for this word, which uh, you can see in the book, is brusqueness. Brusqueness. Okay. So here, the taxi driver's brusqueness. Okay. So the taxi tri cab driver is like, come in, and then like maybe no talking or something like that. Where do you want to go? This is brusque, being brusque. Concise, okay? Good writers write concisely. Concise. <coughs> Sorry, I have a bit of a cough today. So concise. Concise usually means that you, you don't have any extra words, okay? So if my, my phone message to you is like, hello, it's Teacher Daryl, please follow me, bye. You don't know what it's about. Maybe I have to cancel class. Maybe you have more homework. Maybe your homework was excellent and I want to talk to you about it, okay? But my message is so concise, you don't have any of that, okay? In a writing, if you are concise, 
Since heist, that would mean that you um, uh, have no extra words, okay? You don't repeat yourself and all that, okay? So sometimes my students will write something like, he was really dead. But it would be more concise to say, he was dead, okay? You don't need really dead. Really is not adding something, okay? So if you take out the really, then your sentence will be more concise, concise, okay? The next word is demean. Demean is not a good word, okay? Um, demean means that you are taking away respect from something, okay? So, um, 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 you know, if I insult you, that's demeaning. Uh, if, I'm, if I say something like, oh, students, students these days are not very smart. But you're a student, you're a student, and you hear this and you're like, hey, I'm kind of smart. My words will demean you, okay? Um, demean means that I'm trying to make the respect lower and lower and lower, okay? Um, if you're somebody's my age and then I get a job and I have to wear like a silly hat, like at, Mac at McDonald's or maybe Disneyland, I'll think, oh, I don't want to wear this hat. Mm, I look so silly. This hat is very demeaning, demeaning, okay? So that's the adjective, demeaning. I'll say this hat's very demeaning. This job is a little bit demeaning. Maybe you have to wear like a um, a big, big, huge costume and then go out on the road and wave at people and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this job. This job is so demeaning. Okay. Next word is despicable. Despicable. Okay. I have my sentence. After the war ended, word got out of the army's despicable actions. Okay. So it's got a war and there's despicable actions. It definitely has a negative meaning, okay? And in fact, the, the meaning of despicable is that other people who look at there should see that actions and then be like, oh, that's horrible and that kind of thing, okay? So uh, if you see me at the park and I'm very far away and you're like, hey, what's Daryl doing? And then, oh, what's Daryl doing? What? He pushed that little girl down and took her candy. And now Daryl's running away. Wow, that was very despicable. How could Daryl do something so bad? Yes, that action would be very despicable, okay? Um, so in the movie Despicable Me, uh, Gru, Gru is supposed to be this bad guy who does all these bad things. But he actually has a pretty big heart, okay? So he's not very despicable. But yeah, despicable is, is, is a serious word. And... Um, it means that anybody looking at that action or that person should be like hating that person, okay? Despicable. Um, emulate. Emulate means copy. Copy, okay? So we usually try to emulate a, like a very good actor. If you're a young actor and then you see a, a, another actor and you really respect them, you might try to emulate them. If you're an artist and you see somebody with a really great painting style, um, and then you might want to try to emulate them, okay? Um, as far as I'm concerned, if you know an older student who gets straight A's, A pluses, please try to emulate that student, okay? Try to copy them the best you can. Evoke. Evoke does have a couple meanings. The boat tragedy. Evoke a strong call for better regulations, okay? So evoking here means that this action is causing people to call for something, okay? So... If there's a big fire and, and people die, maybe the, the other people in the city, they're like, we need better rules. We need to be safe in our buildings. So we'll say the accident evoked calls for uh, better better rules, better laws. Okay, So evoke. Evoke can have another meaning. Um, evoke just means that it brings something to people's brains. Okay, So if I show you a really great picture, and it, you are immediately thinking about your childhood, you say, oh, that picture is evoking memories for me, okay? Um, so I grew up on a farm. So sometimes if I see a farmer, a farming picture, I'll remember like playing in fields and having all the animals and stuff like that. So it, it will bring, bring into my brain memories of my childhood, okay? So, but you can have bad, it can evoke bad images too, right? So, um, Maybe 10 years ago, a dog bit you really badly, right? And you had to go to the hospital. Um, and then today, 10 years later, you see the same kind of dog. 
And you say, oh, it's evoking memories of that bad experience I had. Okay, so evoking is bad things. Uh, it can it can be used for good things and bad things. Evocative, evocative means that um, uh, like something. If you say something is very evocative, it means that it's showing an image that's very very similar to the real to the real the real thing. Okay, so um, here. I have my example sentence. The book's vivid description was evocative of the jazz age. Okay, so the 1920s in Europe or in America. Okay, so this is the jazz age, and so um, the description is very, very close to what it was. Maybe you say the picture was evocative of China in the year 1500. Okay, so it just is like very, very good at putting the image in your mind. Okay. Excruciating. Hey, okay? hopefully you don't feel anything as excruciating. This guy's got an excruciating headache. Okay, so it just means very, very painful. My toothache is excruciating. Yesterday my headache was excruciating. After the car accident, uh, Becky's back was excruciating. It means really, really, really painful. Okay, now. If you're in an English class and it's really boring and the teacher's like, students, please turn to page 50. You can also say, hey, this class is excruciating. In this case, it means it's causing you really, really bad pain, but it, it means boring. Okay. The next word, hey, we're into the next page, will be inaugurate. Inaugurate. Okay. Um, inaugurate means that, that you're going to try to open something or something's going to start for the first time. Um, so when, a, when you have a new president or a country has a prime minister and it's kind of like their first day, they often have a party, okay? So when Barack Obama or Donald Trump became president, you know, on the very first day, there's like a party, okay? and this will be like the inauguration party, okay? And the country is inaugurating a new president. Um, we use it for... for um, uh, presidents, you can also use it for new buildings, so uh, my sentence here is the university will inaugurate a new building. Okay, so this is like when you first start to use something. Okay, pervade, pervade. Okay, pervade means that something is spreading out, going everywhere. Okay, um, so if you have a barbecue and it smells great, pretty soon all your neighbors will knocking on the door and like, so barbecue, huh? Can I come in? Because um, the smell, the smell will pervade, pervade the neighborhood. Okay, so it means it'll go everywhere. Bad smells also pervade an area. Okay, so if you go into somebody's bedroom and it just stinks and something like that, stinky, stinky socks. Um, we'll say the smell is pervading the room. Okay, um, but you can also use fashion things. You know, like if a crazy hat becomes fashion, uh, and then you see it once, and then the next day you see it like five times, and you see it like a hundred times, and then everyone has it. Um, you can say it's pervading, pervading the society. Okay, so that's pervading it, going everywhere. Um, proprietor. Proprietor is an older word. Uh, proprietor. It just means the owner, the owner of a business. Okay, but sometimes you will see it. Like if you go to a hotel and let's say the proprietor, the proprietor asks people to not smoke. Okay, so it just means that the owner, the owner doesn't want smoking. Um, if you go to a restaurant. And they'll say, you know, um, the proprietor is asking that nobody uses cell phones, uh, maybe in a fancy restaurant. Um, so the proprietor, it's going to be um, the boss, the boss or the owner, usually the owner. Okay. Um, sometimes when we have the word proprietor, it just means that they, they own the building. Okay. So they're the, the landowner and the building owner. Next is this word. Be careful of the P, pseudonym. Pseudonym is a fake name. Okay, it's a name that that's not real. That's not real. Um, usually, when we do pseudonyms, it's not a criminal. If uh, if a criminal, a bad guy, is using a, a a fake name, English we have another word. Okay, we say the word alias. That's not what this is. A pseudonym is usually kind of like authors will use pseudonyms. So like um, Mark Twain or. Um, I have Mark Twain here. Mark Twain's real name was Samuel Clemens, Samuel Leghorn Clemens. Okay, so that Mark Twain is his fake name. So that's his pseudonym. Pseudonym. Okay. 
So George Orwell is another famous pseudonym, okay, for an author who wrote 1984. Um, rebuff. Rebuff is a little bit similar to the word reject, okay? But it's usually a really strong reject. So, like, if you invite me, you say, Daryl, please come to my birthday party. And I'll be like, hmm, I'll think about it. And then maybe two days later, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't go. I, I did reject your invitation, okay? However, if I rebuff your, your uh, invitation, You'll say, Daryl, please come to my birthday party. And I'll be like, no, no, I don't like you. I don't like you very much. No, like this. I am rebuffing your invitation. It's usually a pretty strong, strong one, you know. So, um, excuse me, boss. Please, please, I don't want to work on Sunday. No, work on Sunday. Or get a new job. So the boss rebuffed, rebuffed your suggestion, okay? Um, good, good, good. We're getting there. Resilient. 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 Okay, it's an adjective. So you say he's very re resilient. Okay. Um, and if you want the noun, it's resilience. Okay. So someone has resilience. They are resilient. Okay. Um, resilient means that you're usually very good uh, with bad things okay so if you're like a healthy person and you get sick um, you can get healthy very quickly okay but if you're an older person or a young child it's usually a little bit more difficult okay so we'll say like um, a healthy person has more resilience um, sometimes um, if someone's very very confident if Daryl is very confident and you're like Daryl you're ugly I'm like I don't care um, and I, I don't listen to it but other people if you're like you're ugly. They'll go home and cry for a long time. Okay, um, they have less resilience. So resilience is about about um, being able to recover quickly, being able to um, have something bad happen and then get back to normal very quickly. Um, you can even use it for for objects too. Whatever, right? If you drop the scissors once and they're broken forever, you say, "Oh, these scissors are very cheap." Right? But if you've dropped them a thousand times and they're still like new, you say, oh, good strength, good strength, very resilient, very resilient. Okay? So it just means that they're very strong. Okay, we're there. We're at the last word. Hey, we're going to get this done in under 20 minutes. Okay? Uh, turbulent. Turbulent usually is, um, uh, not usually, but often, often used to describe airplane trips. Okay? So here is my beautiful airplane. Okay? Um, if you're on the airplane and you just go here to here, that's great. No turbulence. But if you're going here to here and it's like, whoa, 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 and people are getting sick and stuff like that, that airplane had a lot of turbulence. Okay, um, like a bumpy ride. Okay. Now, if you use it in a different way, um, you can say like that country is having a lot of turbulence. It means usually that there's some violence. Um, people maybe want a new government, and the government doesn't want to change. So people are out protesting, and the police come and hit them, and uh, the newspapers are, are, are hopefully covering the story. Um, we'll say, oh, that country right now is very turbulent. Maybe you should not visit visit that country. Um, it it's, it's, can be a little bit dangerous. Okay. Um, and the last thing, if we have weather, and we say the we weather is very turbulent, it was going to mean like stormy rain and hurricanes and typhoons and stuff like that okay um oh so i got my picture okay if you want this paper you can click in the link down below okay if you need any help you can ask me i will do my best um if you're my students you have to get ready for the test okay and please make sure you know how to say all of the words okay know their meanings and pronunciation take care students good luck with this and Congratulations, starting book eight.